Hi there, this is Al24 News live from Algiers, coming up next in our news program. Nearly 24 million Algerian voters are called to the polls today, Saturday, to elect their representatives to the communal and provincial people's assemblies. Plus, Washington expressed its deep concern about the military escalation in Ethiopia, called for urgent negotiations on the crisis. And finally, Solomon Islands police have found three bodies in a burnt-out building and arrested more than 100 people in this week's violence sparked by concerns about the Pacific nation's increasing links with China. Hello again and welcome. First in our top stories, nearly 24 million Algerian voters are called to the polls today, Saturday, to elect their representatives to the communal and provincial people's assemblies, a ballot which constitutes the culmination of the institutional building process and should mark the transition to a new governance of communities to give strong impetus to local development. The President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Taboon, accomplished Saturday at the level of the Ahmed Orwa School in Stawali West of Algiers, the capital, his electoral duty in the company of his family as part of the election of the members of the municipal and province's popular assemblies for a five-year term. The President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Taboon, affirmed Saturday in Algiers that the local elections are the last stage for the building of a modern state with the participation of its children. He added that we will build an economically strong state within the democracy and citizen freedom. Citizenship is a learning process. It's not innate, yet voting remains a national duty. We should all keep each other aware of this. This is the last stage for the building of a modern state with the participation of its children, who choose their representatives. We will build an economically strong state within democracy and citizen freedom. Several high government officials also accomplished their electoral duties notably including the Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Ayman bin Abdurrahman, the Chairman of the National People's Assembly, Ibrahim Bougali, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the National Community Abroad, Rumtala Mamra, among other officials. This event is a springboard for the establishment of a state of democratically elected institutions. We can say today that the process has been completed, waiting for the formation of the new National People's Assembly very soon. This day is considered very important for the new Algeria, hoping that the voters will be numerous and go to the polls, because the communal and provincial assemblies are in direct contact with the populations. They will ensure that all their complaints are taken into consideration. The polling stations open on Saturday morning at 8 a.m. across the entire national territory. The president of the National Independent Election Authority, Annie, may, however, if necessary, at the request of the coordinator of the province or Wilaya delegation, extend the closing time of the polling stations until 8 p.m. maximum. The president of Annie assured that the polls are taking place in complete transparency. As an Algerian, I wish for a better change. I hope it will help our youth living in better conditions. I hope this goes successfully and we all elect the right people to make the desired change. The number of candidates for the Municipal Council is 115,230, while for the province the number of candidates is 18,993. More than 1 million supervisors were mobilized for the smooth running of the ballot in 61,696 stations and 13,326 polling centers spread across the 1,541 municipalities of the country. The ballot takes place in the presence of 182,981 observers delegated by the 40 or so political parties vying for these local elections. And to talk more about these elections, Badis Khinisa, political and foreign affairs analyst, joins us live via Skype from Paris. First, Badis, President Taboon has talked about the importance of these local elections in ensuring Algeria's national security. How comes? First of all, good evening and thank you uh, for your invitation. 
Listen, these elections, uh, we need maybe to remind that uh, uh, are uh, one of the several milestones, uh, I would say, uh, set it up and achieved by the, the president, uh, ro a new Algeria uh, roadmap set it up by the president, Abdelmajid Taboun. Uh, the the renew or re-legitimate uh, process, I would say, is ongoing. But even it's mandatory, actually, uh, if we uh, we want to create, I would say, uh, a politic and a new politic and democracy uh, environment. Uh, at the meantime, uh, the, the, the elections, as you know, are crucial, uh, especially in this uh, critical period uh, where the Algerian state, but even the people, Algerian people are target, targeted, are the main target of, I would say, known and unknown enemies. Uh, as we know also, the, the politic uh, stability or, or the local politic stability is part of uh, uh, the, what I call, internal front strength. Uh, that's uh, the local, uh, um, I would say, the, the, the local elections are uh, the lowest uh, level link between the citizens or the political class and the citizens. That's why uh, uh, the, the national security, just to reply to your question, is closely related to uh, the state uh, legitimate institutions uh, sustained by the military is, uh, inst institutions here, and also the wilaya is, and the municipal are, councils are uh, uh, definitely part of it. Yeah. What are your comments on President Tebboune's statements to media on the fact that people are free, the one who wants to vote votes, and the one who doesn't want to vote then he or she is free? To be honest, I totally agree with this point of view. And by the way, it's realistically the, 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 the right behavior, I would say, or what should be the democracy behavior, behavior if you want to create really a, 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 a strong state in line with the democracy principles. But at the same time, uh, let me tell you that uh, the challenges uh, never fall from, uh, from sky. So we need maybe to reconsider the, the, the citizens uh, um, none of the citizens uh, is bound or obliged to vote, but at the same time, the, we need to make a change uh, rea realistically. So uh, the vote is part of it. We need to reconsider maybe our role to reassess maybe our uh, duties, citizenship duties. Uh, we need the, the common effort, the common, uh, I mean, uh, actions uh, by by uh, applying the, 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 the citizenship rules in the local uh, uh, stage and after in the national stage. That, that's why for me it's, uh, it's really definitely um, very important to maybe rethink about and uh, uh, take place then, in the, the new then Algeria how construction. how far are these local elections important in working on Algeria's economic sustainable development at a time when the world is still bearing the overloads or the consequences of coronavirus pandemic? Listen, in the rule, uh, I would say, uh, the, the economic rule principles, the uh, local development, economic local de development sustains the national one. Uh, we need to, to build up or to build a new mechanism, local mechanism and a new dynamics uh, development at the local stage in order to maybe to push the, uh, the economic growth or the national economic growth prior to any, uh, I would say, structural uh, efforts or structural reforms uh, according to the president program economic uh, topic, of course. And uh, finally, and just in a couple of words, uh, but these, these elections seem to be promising for the representation of youth and women. What are your thoughts? I hope so, to be honest. But uh, at the same time, I don't have a doubt because uh, uh, we witnessed uh, in the previous elections, uh, parliament elections, uh, for sure the, the, the women and youth uh, shall arise once again. But I think it's not the most important criteria. Uh, actually, the most important thing is that uh, it's up to the people, to citizens to, uh, I would say, um, decide and choose the, the, the right one, the right uh, person, uh, the, the, the most competent, the, the most uh, capable and responsible, and above all, maybe the, the one who will stick with the, the election pledges and the elections um, uh, promises. But uh, once you. again, to, to close, you so uh, finally... Much.
Betis yeah. Genisa, political and foreign affairs analyst, who joined us live via Skype from Paris. And in the same file, and according to what was announced today, Saturday, the head of the Independent National Election Authority, Mohamed Shorfi, said that the national participation rate in the election of members of the municipal people's councils reached 13.30% at one o'clock in the afternoon at the national level, while it has reached 12%. 0.70% in the election of members of the state popular councils. And moving on to another story now, hundreds of Jordanians protested on Friday condemning the agreement with the Zionist entity in a step saying it went closer to normalizing the relations with the Zionists as the latter continued to occupy Palestinian territories. Opponents also argued that the agreement would force Jordan to rely on its neighbor, Islam State. Around 3,000 demonstrators gathered on Friday in the Jordanian capital to protest against a water for energy agreement between Jordan and Zionist entity. The agreement would be one of the largest cooperation projects since the country signed a peace deal 27 years ago. Jordanian police arrested 36 university students who were peacefully protesting against the agreement. Under the deal, Jordan would receive 200 million cubic meters of desalinated water from Zionist entity in return for 600 megawatts of electricity generated from a UAE-funded solar energy plant in Jordan. The project's declaration of intent was signed on Monday in Dubai by Jordan's water minister, Zionist entity's energy minister, and the United Arab Emirates climate change minister in the presence of U.S. climate envoy John Kerry. The agreement intends to address Jordan's dire need for water and the Zionist entity's goal to expand its renewable energy mix. It's worth mentioning that Jordan is currently the second most water-scarce country in the world, according to UNICEF. The Saudi-led coalition fighting in Yemen said early today, Saturday, it launched airstrikes on military targets in the Yemeni capital, Sana'a, asking civilians not to gather around or approach the targeted sites. On the other hand, the Houthis have repeatedly launched cross-border attacks on Saudi Arabia using drones and missiles. Washington experts its deep concern about the military escalation in Ethiopia and called for urgent negotiations on the crisis. U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price said Secretary Anthony Blinken is deeply concerned about the military escalation in Ethiopia and calls for urgent negotiations on the crisis. Zahra Farjani. Washington is insisting that diplomacy is the only option to stop the conflict in Ethiopia between government forces and the fighters of the Tigray Liberation Front. As the State Department spokesperson Ned Price said in a statement late on Friday, Secretary Blinken expressed grave concern about a worrying sign of military escalation in Ethiopia and emphasized the need to urgently move to negotiations. The U.S. Embassy in Addis Ababa said earlier that the security situation in Ethiopia continues to deteriorate, urging Americans to leave immediately using available trading options. While the battles are escalating between the Ethiopian army and the Tigray Liberation Front, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed said in his first appearance from the fight in France that his army achieved what he described as great victories on the Tigray front. Tigray forces threatened to advance towards the capital Addis Ababa or try to cut off the road linking landlocked Ethiopia to the region's largest port in Djibouti. The front also announced the continuation of fighting on all fronts, appealing to the people of a far region to get rid of the groups working for the government. The war has caused significant humanitarian repercussions in Ethiopia and in this context the United Nations World Food Programme said that the number of people in need of food assistance in northern Ethiopia has risen to more than 9 million compared to about 7 million last September. The discovery of a new and more infectious coronavirus variant by South African health authorities has sparked strong reaction across the world, with a number of countries banning travelers from several southern African countries. The World Health Organization announced it has designated the newly identified coronavirus variant as a variant of concern named Omicron. 
Omicron is the new variant that worries the world, potentially very contagious and with multiple mutations. This new South African variant has apparently already gained ground. Several countries like Belgium, Botswana and Hong Kong have announced that they have already detected at least one case on their territories. Based upon the information that we have, particularly from South Africa, um, they have advised WHO that this variant should be classified as a variant of concern. So today we are announcing B11529 as a variant of concern named Omicron. Omicron's arrival comes as Europe is already facing a fifth wave. The United Kingdom, France, Italy and Cyprus banned flights from South Africa and neighboring countries as of Friday. The United States, Canada and Brazil have suspended travel to and from Southern Africa to curb its progress. Deemed of concern by World Health Organization, this variant has a large number of mutations, some of which are highly contagious. At this stage, scientists still do not know whether the current vaccine constitutes an effective shield against the Omicron variant, but the current indications are rather pessimistic. So Omicron uh, B11529 is named as a variant of concern because it has some concerning properties. Um, this variant has a large number of mutations, and some of these mutations have some worrying characteristics. Right now, there are many studies that are underway. There's a lot of work that is ongoing in South Africa and in other countries to better characterize the variant itself in terms of transmissibility, in terms of severity, and any impact on our countermeasures like the use of diagnostics, therapeutics, or vaccines. So far, there's little information, but those studies are underway. So we need researchers to have the time to carry those out. And WHO will inform the public um, and our partners and our member states as soon as we have more information. The German laboratory BioNTech has announced that it is studying this new variant and expect at the latest in two weeks for the first results of studies, which will determine whether it is capable of escaping vaccine protection. The first European case of the new B11529 variant has been detected in Belgium as the UK imposed new restrictions on travel from South Africa and five other nearby countries because of the risk that vaccines may not protect against it. The case was identified in an vaccinated young adult woman who developed mild flu-like symptoms 11 days after traveling and had no links with South Africa or other countries in Southern Africa. A case of the new Omicron COVID was discovered today in a traveller returning from South Africa. The COVID mortality rate in Germany is increasing at a quicker rate than last year. There has been a more or less consistent increase of daily COVID-19 deaths since August the 4th, 2021. According to German health officials, the members or the numbers progressively climbed after that with a major increase from October the 27th, 2020 to January the 14th. 2021. Solomon Islands police have found three bodies in a burnt-out building and arrested more than 100 people in this week's violence sparked by concerns about the Pacific nation's increasing links with China. Nebel Khazini reports. Three people have been found dead in a burnt-out building in Honiara, the capital of the Solomon Islands. The first reported deaths after days of unrest in the capital city. The chaired bodies were discovered in a store in the Chinatown district late on Friday, after several days of violent demonstrations. What started a small protest in Honiara on Wednesday turned rapidly into rioting and looting. Police fired tear gas and rubber bullets at the demonstrators, who set fire to the national parliament, a police station and many other buildings. Protesters demanded Prime Minister Manasseh Sogavari to resign. Massive infrastructure investment from Beijing was expected since the 2019 shift in allegiance from Taiwan to China. However, with the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic shortly after the shift, none of that has so far been achieved. So Gavari has been widely criticized by leaders of the country's most populous island of Malaita for his decision to drop diplomatic ties with Taiwan in favor of mainland China. The English Channel is fueling tensions between the UK and France over how to stop migrants from crossing the world's busiest waterway in small boats. The politicians on both sides of the Channel are blaming their counterparts for failing to prevent Wednesday's tragedy. Let's follow this report. It seems that tensions between France and the UK have escalated after letters sent publicly by Boris Johnson to the French President Emmanuel Macron. 
The latter criticized the British Prime Minister over what he called his failure to act seriously to find a solution to the cross-channel migrant crisis. I'm surprised by the methods when they are not serious. You don't communicate from one leader to another on issues such as these by a tweet that are made public. We're not whistleblowers. Come on. Come on. Following an accident on Wednesday when 27 migrants died off the coast of Calais in the largest tragedy of its kind in the Channel. Boris Johnson wrote in his letter to France that he had long been profoundly concerned about a tragedy in the English Channel and such a catastrophe has now happened. Johnson also asked France to immediately start taking back all migrants who arrived to England. The French government spokesman Gabriel Attal called the letter threadbare in its substance and completely inappropriate in its form. He added that the idea of sending back migrants to France is obviously not what is needed to resolve this problem. French Interior Minister Gérald Darmanin also reacted to Boris Johnson's request by cancelling the visit of his British counterpart Priti Patel to a meeting on migration scheduled for Sunday. The Channel crisis has added more tensions between Paris and London following several bilateral issues unsolved after Britain decided to leave the European Union. French President Emmanuel Macron and Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi in the presence of Italian President Sergio Mattarella signed a treaty of enhanced bilateral cooperation to strengthen relations damaged in recent years by diplomatic disputes. Hussein Berkan. France and Italy signed on Friday amid great media coverage in Rome a treaty of enhanced bilateral cooperation in order to strengthen relations damaged in recent years by diplomatic dispute. And in an atmosphere of European transformation with the departure of the German Chancellor Angela Merkel. The treaty was initially at the Corinale Presidential Palace by French President Emmanuel Macron and Prime Minister Mario Draghi in the presence of the Italian President Sergio Mattarella. Draghi stated in a joint press conference with his counterpart, President Emmanuel Macron, that the treaty marks a historic moment in the relations between the two countries and highlighted the importance of having a policy of managing migrant flows. This enhanced cooperation treaty that we signed this morning marks a historic moment in the relationship between our countries. Regarding migration, we recognize the need for a policy of managing migration flows and asylum shared by the European Union based on principles of responsibility and solidarity. We are committed to protecting our agricultural systems. On this matter, we reach the common position. It is a fundamental issue for our two countries. For his part, President Emmanuel Macron highlighted major projects of common European interests. We have noted a common vocation through major projects of common European interest, whether in hydrogen, the cloud or space. And this morning, we have noted an important agreement on space, which will give new impulses to this industry, which is so important for both our civil and military activities. And from clarification, in the field of launchers to new projects, we are also writing a very important page in our space cooperation. The Treaty of Enhanced Bilateral Cooperation, called the Corinale Treaty, is very rare in Europe. And it is only the second that France concludes after the LSE Treaty initialized in 1963 with Germany and enhanced by the Treaty of Aichen in 2019. President Volodymyr Zelensky told journalists that Kyiv had information about a coup plot involving people in Ukraine and Russia and seeking to supplant him with the media oligarch. However, he offered few details. Marwa Belaymar. Vladimir Zelensky claimed that Ukraine had uncovered a plot for an attempted coup planned for December 1st. He also said Ukrainian intelligence had obtained audio recordings of the plotters discussing their plans, which involved time to enlist the support of Ukraine's richest man, Renat Akhmetov, speaking at an hours-long press conference. The Ukrainian president did not directly accuse the Kremlin of involvement and he said that there is a possibility that businessman and former parliamentarian Renat Akhmetov was unaware of the discussions.
But I can add that we have not only the agent's information, but we even have audio recordings on which representatives of the Ukraine, let's call them like this, discuss with, let's call them representatives of Russia, the participation of Renat Akhmetov in a coup d'etat in the Ukraine. Russia has been building up forces near its border with Ukraine, and Kyiv, the US and NATO have raised concerns in recent days about the expected Russian attack. Moscow has denied the accusations and blamed Washington for raising tensions in the region. The Kremlin has also accused Kyiv of provocations in its years-long conflict with pro-Russian protesters in two separate eastern regions. Ukraine itself constantly, and I think is still doing that, part of them have been airlifted from the U.S. continent directly to our borders. The conflict in eastern Ukraine has come into renewed focus in recent weeks amid Western warnings of Russia military activity near Ukraine's border. As earlier this year, amid similar warnings, Russia has dismissed the concerns as hysteria, saying troop movements on its own territory are its own business and no cause for alarm. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida vowed at his first parade of forces today, Saturday, to consider all options, including acquiring the ability to strike enemy bases. Kishida also pledged to create a stronger self-defense force to protect the country amid growing threats from China and North Korea. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kushida vote at his first parade of forces Saturday to consider all options, including acquiring the ability to strike enemy bases. He explained that the security situation around Japan is changing rapidly, and the reality is becoming more dangerous than ever, with Pyongyang continuing to test ballistic missiles and developing its capabilities, and Beijing seeking to display its military capabilities and increasingly aggressive activity in the region. He added that Japan will consider all options, including having the so-called attack capabilities on enemy bases with the aim of continuing to strengthen the necessary defense force. The security environment surrounding our country is showing major changes at an unprecedented speed. I have made instructions to revise the national security strategy, national defense program guideline, and medium-term defense program plans. Among them, we will consider all options including possessing the capability to attack the so-called enemy bases to strengthen our defense power that is necessary. Kishida also pledged to create stronger self-defense force to protect the country amid growing threats from China and North Korea. Japan is concerned about China's increasing pressure on Taiwan because control of the island would bring Chinese forces within 100 kilometers of its territory and would endanger key maritime trade routes that supply Japan with oil and other goods. And for more world news, let's follow these news briefs. Kyrgyzstan will vote for the third time this year, following a long-delayed reply for the 2020 parliamentary election, which resulted in the government's demise. Security forces in Kyrgyzstan, on the other hand, believe they have apprehended 15 active participants of a coup attempt, including politicians and previous officials ahead of a legislative vote this weekend. France is open to debating the prospects of autonomy for its overseas Caribbean island territory Guadeloupe. Minister of Overseas Territory Sébastien Le Corneau raised the issue in a YouTube video directed at the inhabitants of Guadeloupe. The message followed large-scale protests on the island against French coronavirus regulations, including mandatory vaccinations for public sector workers. The United States and Iran will have a high-stakes negotiations in Vienna on Monday. European officials will act as a go-betweens. This is due to Iran's refusal to engage directly with the U.S. officials who are attempting to resurrect a nuclear deal that the Trump administration abandoned. A 24-year-old Kurdish woman from northern Iraq has become the first victim of this week's mass droning in the channel to be identified. Maryam Nouri Mohammed Amin was one of the 27 people who died while attempting to cross to Britain on Wednesday. 
She and 17 men, six other women, one of whom was pregnant, and three children died after their inflatable boat sank into the sea off the northern French coast. According to Amnesty International and other rights organizations, more than 100 individuals were injured in eye injuries during this year's harsh crackdown on huge rallies by Colombian security forces, particularly the country's anti-riot squad. In another context, Colombia accuses former FARC guerrillas of destroying the Amazon, which raised enormous areas of rainforest to bring in livestock and grow plants for cocaine production. Elysee presidential office said on Friday that French President Emmanuel Macron will go on an official visit to the Gulf region, visiting Saudi Arabia, the UAE and Qatar between December 3rd and 4th. France maintains strong relations with the Gulf states in economic and cultural terms, but also in terms of security. On the dark web, criminals with sophisticated forgery capabilities are selling legitimate immunization certificates. The gang is thought to have gained access to government networks or hacked the cryptographic keys of the National Health Authority. Two men have been killed by falling trees as Storm Arwen lashed parts of the UK with high winds, rain and snow. A rare red warning for wind had been issued by the Met Office on Friday across the east coast of Scotland and northeast England with the highest speeds of 98 miles per hour recorded at Brisleywood in Northumberland. And with this, our news comes to an end. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.